What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, beautiful Thursday evening. April 15th is the date, 2021. It is about 7.40 p.m. West Coast time here in California. The latest quake out here. Going to be a 4.4 here in the uh, South America region, right around the Chile area. Activity ramping up a little bit uh, south of the e equator. Uh, and also some interesting earthquake activity out around Louisiana of all, of all places. I know we talked about that... Uh, Panhandle, Texas earthquake last night. Now we're getting some further movement to back building uh, right around the uh, Louisiana area. Um, something to watch here. Of course, we got the New Madrid fault system, New Madrid fault system up here to the north. Uh, this activity that took place today, this 3.3 and a 3.1. Uh, let's go ahead and actually a 3.1 and a 2.5 here around the Louisiana area. I was just out there uh, storm chasing here last week. 15 kilometers below surface for uh, roughly about both of these earthquakes here. Uh, 3.1, I know some folks are probably gonna, did report filling it. Let's check out the Did You Fill It reports. Of course, these uh, smaller magnitudes are felt much more on a wider scale uh, east of the Rockies there. Definitely uh, felt by quite a few people. It looks like in uh, Mooringsport, Mooringsport area. Uh, of course, Shreveport and uh, looks like Marshall, Texas as well. Quite a few folks reported filling that earthquake on the light scale. Very, very light scale. Um, as far as historical seismic activity, folks, I can't really say there's been a whole lot of movement out there in recent times. Uh, looking at the regional information here. Go ahead and click up here real quick. Uh, at least anything 4.5 and above, I don't see anything in that area. Of course... Um, you know, you, you go further up north here around the New Madrid fault, New Madrid fault system. Uh, you can look at uh, potential uh, larger magnitudes. Do want to check out the uh, seismic hazard from the USGS in this area? Uh, if I can click the right one, US hazard. They're they're kind of right smack dab where there's not supposed to be any earthquake activity. <laughs> if you look at that, they're in the grayscale. Uh, of course, the New Madrid fault system up here in the high risk region. Uh, and of course the west coast plate boundary and whatnot uh, in california and all that area is of course in the doomsday uh, scenario category but uh, as far as this louisiana earthquake activity just kind of kind of in a weird area i mean you just don't see too many earthquakes there in louisiana uh, falls far as fault structures go i'm not seeing anything within this map not saying there isn't any uh looks like this took place right around the longswood uh, long longwood oil and gas field hmm Coincidence? Probably not, right? But just kind of showing you guys the increased pressure out here along the North American plate. We've been seeing it out there in the West. Uh, of course, pressure does uh, uh, back build and it does tra uh, travel quite a distance there. Um, and of course, I believe the strain's kind of building out here in the in this area uh, with these quakes. Let's go ahead and check out the satellite view real quick of uh, of this region. I mean, there's no need. There's no need to question it. It's written right there on the map that this is oil and gas fields. Pumping operations galore all over the place in this area of Louisiana. Uh, each one of these little uh, specks are not uh, beautiful farmhouses. They are indeed um, uh, oil and pumping operations out there um, within the vicinity of just a couple hundred feet of these two, earth two earthquakes. So there's no doubt uh, I'm calling this one... Uh, well, obviously, it's plate tectonics, plate tectonics at work, right? Due to the pressure out here, but um, not natural. Uh, Man-made uh, quakes over time, weak, weak areas in the crust, if you will, uh, due to um, withdrawal of uh, of the uh, valuable natural resources and whatnot in this region. Moving up ahead, Oklahoma still seeing a little bit of a seismic activity. Let's go ahead and go down to the all magnitude so we can get a little bit better view here. Still some movement down in Texas area. Of course, uh, New Madrid's pretty quiet. Up around Memphis, Tennessee, Kentucky region, southern Illinois is that New Madrid fault system. Uh, it's an area to watch for uh, some major quakes there in the future. It's been relatively quiet since the, uh, what was it, 1800s or so. West Coast still seeing an increase in activity uh, roughly around the Ridgecrest area. A couple uh, smaller quakes there um, north of the Garlock Fault structure. No no major movement along there, which is good. Uh, and just some general activity all along the uh, San Jacinto Fault area. 
So movement uh, up here north of Carson City, still seeing some activity up there. A couple small microquakes around the Reno and Lake Tahoe area. Uh, and also some further movement over here, kind of watching this region along the uh, Calaveras Fault structure. That's this region that goes near Millipedes. Millipedes uh, Fremont regions just up here to the northwest. Uh, a little bit of inland there on the North American plates, showing some seismic activity, including south of Pleasanton near Livermore. Uh, not for sure what fault structure is out there. I don't see a whole bunch, but uh, some mountains out there, and that's obvious sign of uh, plate tectonics at work, right? We do have this uh, Greenvale fault system that runs kind of north and south. Not a major fault uh, area, but uh, definitely something to watch. San Francisco seeing a little bit of further movement north of Pacifica, just a small little 1.1 right off the major plate boundary called the San Andreas Fault. Uh, uh, just kind of some microquake activity up there, folks. Some uh, further movement along the Mendocino Fault structure, 11 kilometers below the surface. That's a 2.6 there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, also some movement up into the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West region, but nothing major. Uh, a little bit of movement picking up along the Aleutian Islands at the tail end, close to the Russia area right along that plate boundary, North American Pacific Plate, subduction zone, 16.7 kilometers for that 5.3. They call it uh, a two-station Alaska. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, it's a movement around the Kuril Islands and also Japan area, seeing a little bit of force. Uh, but still no major earthquakes here in this region, folks. Just kind of kind of waiting. You know, it's just kind of a, I'm really expecting some further large-scale movement here pretty soon before anything else. Hawaii still seeing some uh, heightened earthquake activity. Watching Mauna Loa closely as well. They're still kind of getting their swarming uh, going on there. West of the uh, the Caldera region of Mauna Loa. About 16 earthquakes within that swarm. And of course down here on the southeast flank of the Big Island. Some further uh, movement there in pretty deep. About 30 kilometers for the majority of those uh, earthquakes there in that cluster. Uh, Yellowstone National Park covering that real quick. Not nothing, nada. Zip zero. Not even worth mentioning. Why even bring it up? Trimmer map. There you go. That's today's earthquake activity. A little bit of further movement there along the uh, southern area. The Cascadia subduction zone extends up here inland into the. Uh, of course, Cascadia is a lock section up here offshore. This is the down dip downstream slippage area underneath the North American plate there, the Juan de Fuca plate subducting underneath the North American plate, creating this trimmer, slow slip uh, episodic, episodic trimmer um, about 30 or 40 kilometers down below the surface there. Looking at, uh, oh, let's see where the trimmer count is, about 600 or 206 epicenters of trimmer uh, today in that region. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, solar weather kind of bouncing around. We were watching uh, for some potential Aurora Borealis kicking up here. Now we're looking at, uh, um, looks like tonight, 50% on the higher latitudes. Tomorrow, bigger chance of seeing uh, uh, the solar storm make its way uh, down towards a mid-latitude with a G1 um, category storm there. High latitude, 60%, 25% for mid-latitudes. Uh, and, of course, this is all from that uh, coronal hole activity that was facing, or that is coming into the Earth view right now. Uh, pretty significantly. couple, um, wow, kind of waking up a little bit there with the uh, sunspots. Amazing what 24 hours will do. Let's see what we got here. We now have three active regions visible today, each located in the southern hemisphere. This includes a new region in formation. Uh, let's, let's see here. Increasing chance of an isolated sea flare. All right, sun. I want this baby to wake up. I want the sun to wake up and pop off massive flares. We need it. It's been quite a while since we've seen any major flaring going on here with the solar minimum, but we're coming back. It's coming back to life, folks, let me tell you. Alrighty, guys, have a good night. Uh, we'll talk get you a little bit later. Stay safe out there in Louisiana, right? Could see potentially more earthquakes out there as pressure increases in the uh, that oil and natural gas field out there. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you a little bit later. Peace out.